Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. It is Monday, February the 8th, 2021. And you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde JKL, and this is episode 83. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. I think Diane fell asleep on us for a second there. It seems like. <laughs> Might just be a screen delay froze. or something. Oh, that's what happened. Your screen froze up. Okay. <laughs> it oh. says the internet connection is unstable. <laughs> oh, Lord. I hope we don't, I hope we don't drop tonight. It's this weather has been bad. <laughs> but all across the country, we've got some bad weather going on. So it's up in Diane. Yep. Yeah, we got ice, ice, ice is the worst. I think snow is not nearly as bad as ice is. Ice really pulls everything down to the ground. <laughs> Here in Oklahoma, we've got some freezing rain expected to come in tonight. So who knows? And it's been, it has been unseasonably cold all the last couple of days. I guess it's going to be uh, in the next uh, 10 days. It's going to be all, you know, under uh, – 30 degrees for Diane is not necessarily weeping for us because I think that's normal for her <laughs> for this time of year up there. <laughs> but that's normal for down here in Oklahoma, you know, we're dying. We usually average what between the, uh, you know, the upper thirties and low forties for our winters. And uh, when it gets down to uh, in the teens, that means it's really cold here on the prairies. <laughs> yeah. The first year that I moved out, really cold anywhere. <laughs> yeah, when I moved out here to the ranch the first year that we were here, it got down into the teens and stayed that way for, I think, for about 10 days or more. I mean, it was just bitterly cold, you know, so. Then we get the but, wind. That's what, we, the, the wind just bites you, it just it rip your skin right off your face. You know? you know, I was having to bring the water in from the animals and thaw it, thaw it from the bucket chunk it out there and then refill it with warm water and take it back out to them so they'd have water for you know every day (laughs) okay this week the uh, theme is uh with using the internet to help develop uh the uh master student relationship and um if our listeners go to www.talk artpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com you'll see the recommended videos uh we have uh, the first video we've played this before but it is just so uh 
informative and wisdom, full of wisdom is uh, Steve Houston on uh, you know growing as an artist. And it's a very, very good video. And then we have our another video on there is our favorite uh, Stefan Bauman. He talks about how to become a master artist. And then the third video was one I just accidentally came across. That I thought was so interesting. We'll talk about that near, hopefully, uh, don't, if we don't forget it, uh, near the end of the podcast. It's uh, women, forgotten women master artists. And I was just blown away. It's a little short video, but I was just blown away of how many uh, great masters artists in the past and over the centuries that were women. But because of they were women, they have almost been forgotten by time. And so now. Yeah, that was a really nice. I thought that was wonderful. I, I enjoyed that one. Well, it made, me, it made me think of my two best friends, you know, women artists. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be forgotten. Not, I'm not going to let anybody. Forget, but, uh, it, it, you know, you're standing on the shoulders of these great masters. You are standing on the shoulders of these women. And we'll, we'll go into, you know, since February is kind of like a, a, you know, uh, salute to women, you know, what is it, national, uh, you know, a lot of the exhibitions that have women theme, you know, artists, you know, so, uh, I thought that that would kind of tie into, you know, what we're, what we're talking about, but that, uh, Getting back to that uh, master artist thing. Okay, I came up with this theme. And then it's like syner synergy, as they call it. Uh, Steve Houston started a private Facebook group for artists where he's going to teach some of his philosophy and some of his art. And, and I somehow I received an invitation. I mean, I was never marked as a friend of his, but. He knew about me, sent me an invitation to join the group. And I immediately shared that with uh, Diane and Constance and Diane jumped on it right away. She was in there before I was. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Diane, when uh, you have had a real uh, master, master artist student relationship, as you've mentioned a couple of times, T tell us a little bit about that. Well, when I was in college, I mean, um, the art department, uh, we did a lot of, well, I took a lot of life drawing class. I had a life drawing class every semester the whole time I was in college. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So a lot of the, um, you know, all my, all my drawing background basically was kind of, <laughs> you know, learning proportions and you know, movement and all that stuff of the figure. And I mean, when we had class two to three times a week for a whole day, like, you know, the whole span of the whole day and working with live models and um, the whole time. So it was quite an experience. I mean, you learn so much and you, you have to work quickly because the models move and they have, you know, have you go through all these different, um, lengths of time um they tell you okay we're gonna have 30 second poses <laughs> so you're like yeah you get ready and you're like drawing like crazy and then 30 seconds later they change it to something else and you're like drawing like crazy wow. and then they and as well as long poses i mean we had you know long poses too but it was you'd go back and forth between the two and um using all different kinds of materials drawing you know drawing materials and um we had to learn like the the bones and the, all the structure, like the, um, the bones and the muscles that you see, you know, that come out on the surface. And we were tested on like the Latin names of all those. And we had to draw them for the test, like for the final test. Wow. Wow. And we had to draw, they'd have a live model there and you didn't know what kind of pose they were going to do, but you had to know like how those muscles were going to wrap around or whatever, depending on how the model was posed. And you had to draw that and then label all the muscles and everything. It was pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> it really was. I mean, it sounds intense. I'd mentioned yeah. that you worked for an artist or something, right? Did that? It, it, I've worked for, I've worked for three different artists, but um, let's see. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't done any model type or, you know, uh, figure type work for anybody. Um, 
they were all doing other things. <laughs> so, um, well, that's what I was talking about when I said kind of like, uh, was that you were just their assistant or their helper, or it wasn't an intern turn type shit, or or like where you were. Um, two of them were kind of intern, but I was I was labeled as an assistant, but I was kind of an intern to them. Um, but it wasn't in painting or drawing. It was in other, uh, I was in, in the fiber arts really big for a while. Oh. So two of those were in fiber arts. Um, one was an international artist and she, or internationally known artist. And, um, she was my, one of my instructors in college. And then she hired me after I graduated to work for her and with her. So, um, she, yeah, she mentored me quite a bit as far as like, how to um, approach galleries and how to um, write proposals for installation art and things like that. Um, she took me down to the, like a lot of the galleries in Washington, D.C. She knew a lot of the people there, like uh, the different galleries, and I got inter- introduced to a lot of people. She'd have like dinner parties at her house and, um, you know, introduced me to a lot, all, all kinds of people. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And, um, all right. Yeah, we did. We did quite a bit of work together, and then, well, she'd get like big commissions. Most of them were installations, so they were huge things. And um, you know, so she we had, we had to put all that together and stuff. The other one, she did. Um, she was a fiber artist too, and she did smaller, more um, individual collector type um, installations. So we'd go to people's houses and and install things um you know that we had created in the studio so um that was yeah (laughs) and then the third the other person i um worked for was a studio assistant for she did licensing artwork and and that that was painting she did mostly um uh, florals so we were creating uh work for the licensing industry and um there's we that was like a whole different thing that i had been had not been exposed to before that so it was a lot of learning and um she was a better known one at the time and so she'd get invited to shows up in new york and in italy and places and i didn't get to go to italy with her but i did go to the shows in new york with her and um you know, they'd have her like in the booths and people would come and get her autograph and all that kind of stuff. It was kind of oh, crazy, cool. but, <laughs> um, yeah, we, I created a, a lot of work with her. Um, okay. but I mean, as far as the drawing part of it, the, the, yeah, I mean, I had so much drawing, you know, when I was in college. So that's where it makes everything else easier. Like when you can draw really well. Yeah. And a lot of my college, um, I had changed majors several times when I was in college, but the majority of it, I was in printmaking. And um, so I, a lot of my work was just like black and white. So you, I learned, you know, black and white um, ways of, you know, sculpting how things looked and stuff. And then later when I started painting, it was pretty easy to just add the color to it. So, because I already knew like the basic structure. Well, that's something. Yeah, I don't think I started using color for a long time. I mean, the one teacher that I had at junior college, he had us just drawing, 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 drawing. Finally, I got it together and took a painting class. And he only let us use a limited palette for so long. And then before we started adding more colors, yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. That, cool. That. That's one uh, thing that, uh, for the first time, this piece that I started this week, for the very first time, I did a, a layout sketch. It wasn't anything real detailed. It was just working out how I was going to, the composition, how I was going to place it. And I've never done that for any of my work, except for watercolors. Now, watercolors, they're, you know, a little more tight-handed and, you know, the quite a bit of drawing for that but for any of the uh, acrylics or oil paintings i've never done that before so and even with the ones that i you know made up in my imagination i would usually look at 
Yeah, I would gather three or four reference photos. Like if I needed a glass bottle, I'd find a specific looking glass bottle, you know, to, and would look at it as I'm, as I'm painting, but I never worked it out. I would already have the placement in my mind. So this was something new on me. And what inspired me to do this was I, I, I came across one of Steve Houston's videos and he talked about that, you know, he said that actually he said, uh, to be a good painter, you don't have to, to be good at drawing, but it helps That's exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can really it does help a lot, you can perfect your, uh, your illustrative hand, your, you know, drawing, uh, it will improve out on your painting. And this did, this was just a simple sketch. It wasn't anything real detailed, but it was enough of it that when I started the painting, I looked at the sketch first before I even begin to look at the reference photos to see what the jar looked like and the light reflection of the, uh, of the, uh, of the two pots that are in it, you know, and then I looked at some pictures of, uh, some flowers of how the petals form and the shadow, you know, but I had already worked out what direction the light was going to come from and what I just was going to recede into the background and what I was going to come out for. I'd done that with the sketch which I'd never done before. So it, it worked out. It's this thing, this, I'm going to finish this either tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to finish this, this, this piece up. And it's just, yeah. wow. I mean, it just, also thumbnails are good to do when you're going to do some, uh, I would do, I was did thumbnails a lot when I was doing, um, landscapes outside. I would do a thumbnail just to make sure it was going to be, that was the way I wanted to do it first, you know, to see if it looked right before going ahead and adding stuff, you know, and pastels also, I like to do thumbnails ahead of time. But getting, getting back to this, this, this uh, master student relationship, what Diane experienced, okay, that was more the traditional way down through the ages. You know, if you look at an art history, you know, Michelangelo and Leonardo, La Vinci and Caravaggio, all, all of the artists, they studied with a greater master at the time when they were young, you know, and it, and then sometimes either w while they were going to an art academy or after, and then, the, and then afterwards would go into an academy. Of course, back in the, you know, what, 15th century, there wasn't very many academies. You know? it, the academies came out of that kind of relationship, but that's throughout the ages. That's been more of the traditional method. So here in the 21st century, how is an artist to, you know, uh, unless you are fortunate where you live, where there's a very vibrant art community and you, and unless you, and then you go to, to art school or some academy and your instructor recommends you, you know, to study with the specific, specific artists in your area, you really, it's, it's, it's hard to find. But we've been preaching on this podcast forever and ever about the internet. This is this is the best way ever to have that master student relationship. And you know, search through YouTube and, and on Facebook. There are tons and tons and tons of videos. There is courses that you can actually sign up with based upon your own nature, you know, how intense you want, you know, and, and there's also some pretty expensive courses too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I like is more of the self pace. Like, you know, both Constance and I, we've been harp. We've mentioned several times with Kelly Folsom, her uh, vital art sessions. You know, we both signed up with that. And this master, uh, student relationship here in my mind, having taken some courses with her because he records, you know, a new video every week of, you know, some kind of a still life. And she emphasizes something, either the composition or the uh, complementary colors or, you know, something is the main purpose that she, you know, she talks about. Yeah, she does. In all these videos, she also has almost 200 some videos of previous recordings. They're all available in the members area for your subscription. And all you do is you type in a, a word in a search box and bingo, the videos pop up, whatever you want to learn. 
So whatever you're you're uh, working on, and like this composition that I was uh, this week that I decided that piece I decided to work on. Okay, there's roses. And I knew that she had done a video for Rose, but I didn't know how many. So I went to the, the website, I typed in roses, and it was three videos that popped up. And so I, before I even started painting the roses, I sat down, I watched one of the videos. I got through it. Okay, I'm ready to start painting. I went ahead and put the other two on play, the quencher, so they would play back to back. And as I'm working, I'm getting this sensation that... Kelly is looking over my shoulder. I said, no, now you got to put a little bit of shadow here. You got to put some more paint on your brush over there. And she's talking about this, <laughs> this, this painting. And I'm following, I, I'm unconsciously following along and doing exactly what she, you know, is instructing. It was, it was spooky, you know, kind of like, <laughs> but that's what kind of hit me that this, you know, in a master a master artist student relationship that's kind of like what it is you know it's uh at least from what i've read i've never experienced one personally up close but as a self-taught artist there's a tremendous amount that i need i still need to learn and i'm learning all the time but it's uh you know this is part of my uh, uh self-education to improve my skills improve my craft you know or, uh, along with, you know, being a professional artist and part of, you know, the growth. And uh, I'm, you know, like in our uh, Stephen Bauman, you know, videos, all of his videos, he's, he beats himself over and over, but he keeps, you know, and the video for this week recommended the uh, uh, how to become a master artist. One thing that he says is each painting is an exercise for the next painting. Yeah. And that, uh, that that is so true so i've been jabbering too much constance your turn what do you got to say about this well you know today especially with everything that's going on it's it's you know the you're having to take lessons online anyway even a lot of the college students are having to to just do school online it's a it's, it's a way to learn now you know whereas you have access to artists you would never have access to you know to talk to and get uh help from absolutely that's like this uh, uh private facebook group that uh, steve houston has started um drawing from life uh with with steve houston uh, for passionate artists uh he is i guess has intentions of every week of uh, uh doing a live uh, video shooting once he gets his technical difficulties. He did his first one this week and he had a little bit of pro problems and hey, you know, he didn't grow up with the internet. So that's why he's natural. He's <laughs> kind of new to him, but uh, his material that he's uh, teaching is, uh, and it just you know, blew my socks. He normally, he, I've seen where he's had, a, he taught a, a master uh, art, course some kind of an art course i thought about looking at it but it's pretty expensive i just didn't have the money yeah you know, to, to do it but he's doing he's teaching the same skills and the same thing and he's offering it you know for free you know to arts and i just you know i'm glad that diane jumped in it so we're both you know i mean we're seeing how it's also it's full of i was amazed that diane uh, did you see how many professional artists that are in that that are in that group i mean artists yeah there was a lot of artists um a lot of them were um guys that did uh, games and like uh i don't even know what all of them were but they were more into like computer generated stuff but they had they had some skill for sure oh yeah it was quite a uh, there was one artist you know for like 30 years he's been a book you know, a book artist or children's books, you know, and there, there's just a bunch of them. And there, I, I think it was up to like a thousand members now, you know, in the, in the group. And uh, so I, I'm looking forward just to see what, uh, you know, see what I learned because uh, that's why one of my goals for the new year, start using my sketchbook. I got my sketchbook and I've got to get into the habit of even when I'm watching a movie or something, be sketching 
sketching every day, I, you know, to, to work on because that's my goal for this year is to improve my craft of, uh, of uh, sketching, you know, and drawing and everything. And, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to learn with the figure in, in particular because it's, it's easy to fudge some other things if you're not, if your drawing isn't just right, but everybody knows what a, a face looks like. So it's like, if you don't do it just right, they'll notice, <laughs> you know? So it, yeah, it does take a lot of practice and it does take a lot of skill to, um, to be able to do the figure and, and faces. Yeah. And, and I also, you know, I wanted another thing for my, my, my pulp radio art, you know, illustration. This is, I mean, I'm, I'm really wanting to, to uh, punch that up, do, do a better quality and to get into uh, uh, doing another uh, another graphic novel. So there's there's quite a bit. I've got a lot on my plate that I'm wanting wanting to do now that I'm uh, retired, and I got the time now. I got no excuse, and I <laughs> I can quit quit watching YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't just watch them. You have to actually practice it. <laughs> yeah, just like you know, he was. Uh, he was I think it was Stephen Bowne was talking about playing instruments. You can't just keep them in the case and then pull them out yeah. and expect yeah. to play like a concert or something. You have to pra actually practice. <laughs> yep. um, I think that's another th thing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's only so much content you can consume. You need to to actually put the what you're consuming into action Absolutely. you know yep and then the last video was the uh the video about uh forgotten women artists so let's talk a little bit about that that video piqued my interest because of my two best women artist friends <laughs> after watching that video, you two are standing on the shoulders of these forgotten master artists and I was amazed. It was a little short video, like well, only about 20 minutes or so, but it uh, went down through the centuries. When you didn't, I didn't know part of any of these women artists. I never heard of. There's a lot of them. Yeah, even back in the Caravaggio time. I mean, there was. Yeah. You know, I think one of the reasons that maybe they're forgotten is because their paintings are in castles or cathedrals or, you know in places where they don't actually get seen by the public very often. Well, and all, know, so. like in the video said, quite a few of them were then until, until recently were thought to be of male artists. They were, you know, yeah, they did. They, they did say that some of them quality were, like a Titian or like a Caravaggio, but it wasn't, it was this, this woman artist. And of course, it wasn't considered proper back. Then. I mean, they were literally barred. So society, they were absolutely barred from from uh, being publicly being an artist, you know. And, but they all uh, developed uh, their skill and their talent, and they painted for dukes and princes, and you know, uh, they, and they had uh, uh, active careers. That one artist, I forget her name, but. She, her entire life, she had 11 children. For mm -hmm. me, think about that. 11 children blew my mind. And she supported her. <laughs> She still found town, time to paint. <laughs> and I think she fed her whole, she was the one who took care of her whole family, wasn't she? With her art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, her, Some of them were hired by, you know, uh, kings and, and, you know, powerful people. And they just you know, work for them yeah. doing portraits of the children and the family and, you know. Yep. But uh, it just blew my, my mind away. She had 11 children and she provided for her children her family, through her art. Her I believe when I looked at her artwork, it was exquisite work too. Yes. Because they also show in the video, folks, if you got, if you get an opportunity, please look at that video. Uh, www.taught.com talkartpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com and it's the last video of a all the forgotten masters and it uh uh you know there's an audio where they describe but then all of the uh their artwork is shown you know in the, in the video and it's just amazing yeah amazing work and 
it's only been since about the 1980s when a lot of these women have been discovered, you know, re- researchers, you know, and, yeah, rediscovered, yeah. you know, they re, you know, rediscovered them, you know, that, uh, and, uh, you know, we all, you know, heard of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Frida Cola and, uh, who is that? Mary, Mary Cassatt and, uh, what's the other one? I forget who else they said. Yeah, you know, uh, those you know. We, we, was it Mary Moser, Angeli? Was it Angelina Kaufman, Clara Peters? She did. Clara Peters did banquet paintings. You know, like back in that. Now that is more like Caravaggio's style of painting. He did the the chiaroscuro. I, I hope I said that right. Anyway, the but the you know just set up a table and paint the stuff that's on the table or the shelf you know yep. so you know they so we, we've heard of you know some of those things but a lot of the early ones i never heard of them all and their their work was just exquisite yeah you know? i just wrote a few names down and what didn't even begin to cover how many artists they women artists they showed their artwork but they were all just really wonderful painters so yeah, it made me wonder how many other women artists there were out there that that never got the notoriety so they're not they are forgotten you know yeah they probably had a lot of other ones that yep. nobody really knows about mm-hmm. really, yeah and everything so uh it made me think about you two that yeah you know, you're standing on the shoulders of these uh of, of these women artists you know that it's actually Thank goodness things are not like they were back then because that was hard <laughs> yeah if we if if this if they had this technology back then where we, we could record we couldn't record for the public because you two would have been prohibited you can't talk probably yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying i mean but, you know they were painting under the table sort of you know yeah but they were provided the, the the main theme throughout the whole whole video was for the majority of the main thing they were doing it to provide for their families that's how they fed the kids that's how they they put food on the table was through their art yeah and and uh that was because you hear so much when our modern society so much of you know the professional women if you have a profession then you can't raise a family and or you can't have an art career or you know so much of them that's that's the the bit of the modern thinking well those ladies did it they they had a flourishing careers and they also raised their kids and raised their family you know and and that was just that was for me that was just heartwarming it is heartwarming and and eye-opening and i thought yeah ought to be a lot of a lot of younger artists women artists ought to see that video and ought to think about that <laughs> okay here i'm being an old man being preachy <laughs> all right okay you two gonna want to add any more comments we'll wrap up this episode if you that's, it. that's about it <laughs> that's <laughs> okay all right you've been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 83 for february the 8th 2021. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I've been here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and we've been talking about the artists and the life of an artist and the life that we live, and I hope you thoroughly enjoy enjoy this uh, podcast. And I'll say bye-bye to Diane and Constance. I'll let Diane say bye to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night, folks. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, please give us some love. Give us some, however you hear this podcast, some thumbs up and some uh, excellent star ratings. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at 
dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.